I'm about to teach you the number one jazz piano improvisational exercise that I've used for my entire career and have taught students for more than 20 plus years that has led to the most success and progress I have ever made and students have ever made in jazz piano improvisation. Hi, my name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. If you haven't checked out Jazz Piano Schools, go do so when you get a chance. There's lots of free education, more than 250 podcast episodes, and we produce a lick of the week every single week. With that being said, let's dive in and I'll show you the exercise. All right, so here is the number one jazz piano improvisation exercise that I recommend you use. What's going to happen here? That's my roads. <laughs> Fun, huh? What's going to happen here? is we're going to be connecting chords, connecting chords, and there's gonna be multiple levels to using this exercise. But at the heart of it, what we're doing is connecting chords and landing on chord tones. And just getting that connection to happen. And so, again, I'm gonna go through a lot of different levels, a lot of different ways to use this. Use this, and I'm gonna start as a beginner. Now, if, you, if you're a beginner, you're going to want to just start by connecting maybe a minor seventh to a dominant chord because in a two, five, one, you're going to see this all the time. So I want you to start on a chord tone. We're going to play all eighth notes for the time being. And I want you to move up and count to yourself. One and two and three and four and one. Now, when the, um, when the exercise starts to get to beat four-ish, like four, right, and a three, four, your brain has to start thinking, okay, how am I gonna get to a chord tone? So one and two and three and four and one, right? So when I'm at beat four, one and two and three and four, I'm like, okay, where are the nearest chord tones? Well, I'm actually on one for the G7 chord. Now our chord tones, if I didn't mention, are the four notes within the chord I'm playing. So I'm on a chord tone on beat four. How do I get to a chord tone? I'm on one, so I could pivot back to that, which is the one I chose, or I could go down to G, which I could go four and one. But we're training our brain. We're training our brain because this has to happen, and we're training spontaneity in our hands to figure out this issue as it's happening in real time. Now, if I go up one and two and three and four, I'm always figuring out this riddle, this problem, not problem, I should say, this puzzle when I'm soloing in jazz. One and two and three and four and one, right? So now I just figured it out. But this is the exercise. I know it sounds very simple, but again, I'm gonna get into more advanced ways to use this. One and two and three and four and one. Now, all I would do from here on out, if you're a beginner, is without the metronome or anything else like that, just go through the different chord tones of a chord and start to move up and down in scalar motions and try and connect it to other chord tones of the next chord. So in this case, I'm going from D minor seven to a G seven. So let me start on the seven now. One and two and three and four and one. So I just connected to the root of the chord. One and two and three and four and one is connected to the seven. Now, if you want to get really regimented about this, you can pick and systematically order the chord tones you're going to connect to. So you can start from the root of the first chord and go to the root of the second chord. Somehow, you just got to figure it out because the figuring out process is literally the, spon the practicing of spontaneity. This is what has to happen in jazz. You're actually practicing improvisation spontaneity. One and two and three and four and one. So there we go. I just figured it out. And then you can play a little faster, get used to it, swing it a little bit. One and two and three and four and one, right? And you can go systematically through all the chord tones if that's the type of person you are, right? So the root, I just went to root to root. I can go root to third now. All this is inside of Jazz Piano School, by the way. If you are a member, you can move through these exercises. One and two and three and four and one. Right, now I landed on the third of the next chord. Now I'm gonna go for the five. One and two and three and four and five and one. And <laughs> we're not playing four, five, right? Um, now I'm gonna go to the seven. One and two and three and four. Now check it out. 
and one. So I do have to make a skip there. So if you do want to go to the seven, which is like an, in more than an octave away, you could add some skips in there, which is completely okay. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but you, so you could go one and two and three and four and one, right? So I added some thirds in there. Scalar motion steps and skips are the most prevalent type of motion in improvisation anyway. So scalar motion or steps or thirds, like skips like this. Right, all of those things are the most prevalent motions in jazz anyway. So you're gonna be practicing a good thing. So you can go one and two and three and four and one, right? So we're practicing the connection of chord tones. Now again, you can start to go from the third now to the root, third to the third, third to the fifth, and practice that however you want. Now, if you're not that type of person, no problem. You don't have to practice it like this, you know? Um, moving through your two fives or your two five ones is going to be great. So at this point, you can just start to practice spontaneity. So put a metronome on and just start on a chord tone and land on a chord tone. But right now we're using all eighth notes. So go slowly, like 50 beats um, BPM. But put that metronome on for some pressure now, right? One and two and three and four and, you know, oh, excuse me. One and two and three and four and one. I was thinking we were in a different key. And then you just keep going around again, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Now there's a lot of different fun ways you can do now. You can start to lead back into the D minor again. So you can just keep looping it, which would sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, so I landed on the five there, one and two and three and four and and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you just keep going over and over and over again. And you're training your mind to break through this mental barrier of connecting into the new harmony, the new chord, which is the number one things that I hear students fail at. Usually when they connect in the chord, they might play something like this. Right, and then they start playing all weird sorts of notes or a non-chord tone, which again, non-chord tones are okay. But as a beginner, we really wanna try and focus on those chord tones. So how do we start to get more advanced with this? Well, <coughs> excuse me, if you know other types of miscellaneous improvisational tools, you can start to add those in. You can make the progressions longer. So you could go two, five, ones, and maybe I use an altered scale over the dominant chord, right? So now my goal, is to connect into a chord tone, use the altered scale over the dominant chord, and then connect back into my C major seven. So it might sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now we're getting out, right? We're getting a little out there, right? I could use a different type of um, improv tool, like a blues scale if I wanted over the dominant chord. One and two and three and four and chord tone first, and then my blue scale. Chord tone. Scalar motion, right? So we're working on the connection now, the connection between the chords. Flip a metronome on, start to apply some pressure. But how do we start to take this exercise and make music out of it? Let's go back to if you're a beginner just for a second. Musicality, space, rhythm and motifs, melodies are what makes music come alive. Now the foundation I just teach you is still there, it's still there. So once we start to add space, rest, rhythm, motifs, right, it's gonna make music. So instead of just going up and down on eighth notes, I'm now going to apply some rhythms, some motifs, some melodies, check it out. One, two, three, and four, and one. Right? So I'm, I'm utilizing the same exercise. I'm still landing on those chord tones and trying to land on the chord tones, but I'm utilizing musicality now, like how music is actually made. I'm not just playing all eighth notes up and down. That's just our starting point. And if I start to go a little bit faster with this, with a metronome, a little bit more swing, it'll sound like this.
right? And you just keep doing this. Now, again, you can start to get way more advanced with this. If you're a more advanced player, you can make, play some rootless voicings, right? Again, like I showed you, you can use your altered scale, different types of tools to connect in. You can up the speed, right? So again, if I were using my half whole scale, maybe, right? So. Now, believe it or not, that what I just played there was the entirety of the exercise I just showed you at a very high speed <coughs> with left hand, more advanced left hand voicings, obviously jumping back and forth, musicality added, but at the heart of it, and then I was using my half whole skill, but at the heart of it, I was still connecting into the chord tones every time, <coughs> excuse me, the chord changed. And that's the purpose of this exercise is to get you to these places. Right now, you can take this way more advanced too. You can start to go in half steps um, or two five. So one of the exercises I love doing is going two five. So A minor seven, D seven, A flat minor seven, D flat seven, G minor seven, C seven. And again, you can use this with scalar motion, all eighth notes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play some more advanced voicings here. Right? So I'm still connecting to my chord tones, just moving up and down with scalar motion. Now I'd change my key. Now I'm in F sharp. Right? And you can just keep going. Now, obviously, if you start to do that fast with a little metronome, a little pressure, it's gonna start to get pretty difficult, right? So again, we're always trying to target those chord tones. So if I start on the five here. Woo. And then you start to flow and move into, I made some mistakes there, right? This is not an easy exercise. But again, I'm not always playing eighth note lines that move into each other. I may add some musicality. So I might go. <laughs> and then you can start to obviously play more licks if you have more language and things like that. You can use more tools. But at the heart of it, the exercise still stays the same. And again, you can start to change up your progressions. Maybe instead of two fives, you go one, four, three, six, two, five, one. And you start from scratch again. So now. Right? So I'm just moving through that exercise. And then again, if I go a little bit faster, don't pay attention to my left hand because I'm just kind of comping for my right hand. You can use root position chords or whatever voicings are at your level, so. Now again, if you know bebop approaches, you can start to add those in as another tool to kind of like increase the difficulty level of this, right? So, uh, sorry, uh, key of C, so. Right? So I added more bobs and wheeze through the use of bebop approach notes. If I wanted to throw in some reharms, right? Instead of the F7, I could go to my tritone. I could go B7, B flat seven, A7 altered and practice my altered scale if I wanted, right? So C, B, B flat, A flat altered, D minor, maybe tritone again. into my C chord. So the exercise is about utilizing the tools you know, musicality, and making connections between chords. 
Because I'll tell you this one thing before I go let you go. The number one reason that solos really don't start to sound good or don't sound good from beginners and even intermediate students and players that I hear, they could have all these licks under their hands. They could be playing. But if I land on some sort of, you know, a non-chord tone, not to say that you can't land on non-chord tones. That's a more advanced topic for a later discussion about using delayed resolutions and things like that. But if you're playing a lot of non-chord tones and landing on them, even with the most fancy licks and stuff like that, trust me, your solo and your melodic lines are just not going to sound good, okay? So whatever level you're at, start to use this exercise. Play it slowly. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't even need your left hand. You could just practice your right hand with Iro Pro. Whatever is necessary for you, just utilize this exercise at whatever level you're at. And I promise you, I promise you, you're going to start to see amazing improvisational results in a very, very quick amount of time. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Talk to you later. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free, amazing education, all of the free podcast blogs. We do have a membership if you're looking to take a next step forward with us, get access to over a thousand different jazz piano videos, playbooks, mini courses, a main course curriculum, success path, and so much more. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at jazzpianoschool.com. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy practicing.